This is Julia Jean Turner. She was called Judy by family and friends. Later, she'll become known as the actress Lana Turner to millions worldwide. Lana was born the 8th of February, 1921, in the small town of Wallace, Idaho. Her parents were John and Mildred Turner. Lana always remembered her father fondly. She said that he would come home from a hard day's work and take her up in his arms and they would dance across the floor. When she was six, the family moved from Idaho to San Francisco. And when Lana was eight years old, her father was robbed and murdered. He had just won money from a gambling in a crap game and he'd put the money in his sock. He was found with one sock off and one shoe off. He had been struck over the eye with a blunt instrument. It was told that he had said that he was taking some of the money that he had just won and was going to buy Lana a tricycle that she had been asking for. His murder was never solved. After the murder, Lana and her mother moved to Los Angeles when she was 10 years old. Now, in 1937, when she was attending Hollywood High School, she skipped typing class for a soda at the Top Hat Cafe located across the street from the school. She always said that she was 16 years old at that time. Publisher Billy Wilkinson had stopped also at the Top Hat for a Coca-Cola and spotted Lana. He asked her if she would want to be in movies. And she said, I don't know, I have to ask my mother. He took her to Harpo Marx, the brother of Groucho, who had just started a talent agency. And they found her the perfect role, playing a schoolgirl, which she said was easy to play because that's what she was. She had to wear a tight sweater and skirt while walking down the street. Now after the movie, the movie was called They Won't Forget, she was referred to as the Sweater Girl. The next year in 1938, she played with Mickey Rooney in Love Finds Andy Hardy. And by now, she was making money and getting more parts. And in 1940, on February the 13th, at the age of 19, she elopes with popular band leader Artie Shaw. It's her first marriage and will end in a few months on the 12th of September of that same year. It'll be a stormy few months with lots of verbal abuse. She said that her first marriage was her college education. MGM was highly upset because they were not informed of the marriage beforehand. And after the divorce from Artie Shaw, in 1941, she played in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with Spencer Tracy and Ingrid Bergman. The next year, in 1942, she played with Clark Gable, Somewhere I'll Find You. Also on the 17th of July, that same year, Lana will marry her second husband, Joseph Stephen Crane, a restaurant owner. She soon became pregnant with her only child, Cheryl. Lana knew she had the R.H. factor in her blood because her grandmother had died from giving childbirth. It had skipped her mother Margaret, but Lana had it, and the only way to save Cheryl was to do a complete blood transfusion as soon as she was born on the 25th of July, 1943. If that wasn't enough, she learned that Crane's Mexican divorce from his previous wife was not legal. 
She separated from Stephen Crane and had the marriage annulled. Now during this time, Stephen tried to commit suicide and she decided to take him back and marry him again for Cheryl's sake. The second marriage only lasted a year until 21st of August, 1944. In 1945, Lana starred in Weekend at the Wardolph with Van Johnson, Ginger Rogers, and Walter Pigeon. The next year in 1946, she had one of her best performances in The Postman Always Rings Twice with John Garfield. In 1948, on the 26th of April, Lana will marry the third time to Henry J. Topping Jr. in a formal wedding at the Topping Estate in Greenwich, Connecticut. Her daughter Cheryl will serve as flyer girl. Henry's proposal to Lana was right out of the movies. He proposed by dropping a diamond ring in her martini while they were dining at Club 21. Although he was a millionaire, he lost his fortune from bad investments and gambling debts. The couple divorced after four years, 12th of December, 1952. And during this marriage, Lana suffers two stillborn births, one in 1948 and one in 1951. She also attempted suicide towards the end of that marriage by slitting her wrist. Less than a year later, she'll marry actor Lex Barker, her fourth husband. They'll be divorced in less than four years on the 22nd of July, 1957. One year before that divorce in 1956, Lana will suffer another stillbirth. She'll become severely depressed and start drinking heavy. Although during this marriage, Cheryl will tell her grandmother that she had been assaulted by Barker. And Mildred, her grandmother, will tell Lana. And Lana will slip into Barker's bedroom at night and place a gun to his head and demand that he leave for good, or she would kill him. He did. That same year after divorcing Barker, she meets Johnny Stampanato. Stampanato was a small-time enforcer for the Hollywood gangster, Mickey Cohen. The affair was violent with abuse and a turmoil. Lana tried to break it off with Stampanato but he wouldn't allow her, even made death threats towards her. Unbelievable, with all this going on, Lana Turner was nominated for an Academy Award for Peyton Place. On April the 4th, 1958, Lana did not invite Stepanado to the Oscar Awards. Instead, she took her daughter, Cheryl. Stepanado was angry and physically abused her after the ceremonies. Now, it's believed that the mob had assigned Johnny Stepanato to get involved with Turner so he could become her agent and they could get a foot in the door of the movie industry. Trouble erupted when Lana refused. Pressure from the mob caused Stepanato to become desperate towards Turner. When Lana moved into her new home located at 7.30, North Bedford Drive in Beverly Hills. Although told to stay away, Johnny shows up. A violent argument erupts in Lana's upstairs bedroom. Fearing for her mother's life, Cheryl goes to the kitchen and gets this knife. She then goes up the stairs to her mother's bedroom door. She runs in and stabs one time in the stomach drops the knife and then runs out. Lana thinks that Cheryl just punched Johnny with her finger because there was little or no blood. Lana stated that she is the one that pulled up his sweater in this photo to see where he was hurt. 
Cheryl will spend the next three weeks in jail, awaiting a coroner's inquest. Now, this is Lana and her mother, Martha, along with Cheryl's father, Stephen Crane, at the inquest. Lana will testify on the behalf of her daughter. The coroner will rule the death of John Stepanato as justifiable homicide. Cheryl will be replaced in the custody of her grandmother. For years, she'll be rebellious and in and out of trouble, spending time in reform schools and mental facilities. Her mother is shown here after one such visit. Now, this is too often a situation where a mother becomes involved with an abusive man, not realizing what it's doing to the child, often being beat up and then going back again and again as Lana did. This makes the child feel unwanted and unloved, and the situation blinds the mother to what it's doing to the child and others around her. In later years, Cheryl will write a book entitled Detour, it's about her life as the daughter of a Hollywood star, good and bad. She's been forthright about her association with Joyce Leroy, her life partner. Lana said that she came to accept Joyce, or Joss as they called her, as a second daughter. And in 1959, one year after Stepanato's death, Lana will renew her career with John Gavin in imitation of life. The next year on the 27th of November, 1960, she'll marry her fifth husband, Fred May, a rancher. He's also a member of the May Department Store family. But within two years, she'll divorce him on the 15th of October, 1962. A friend of hers said that Lana's problem was that she got tired of her men too quick. In the mid-60s, offer for work was slowing down. So she marries movie producer Robert P. Eaton on the 22nd of June, 1965, her sixth husband. While married to Eaton, he will write The Body Brokers, a behind-the-scenes look at Hollywood, which was actually about Lana's experiences. They will divorce in 1969, and she'll marry the final time that same year to Ronald Peller, who went by the stage name of Dr. Dant. He performed in nightclubs as a hypnotist. After being married about six months, Dr. Dant talked Lana into writing a $35,000 check for an investment. He took the check along with some of her jewelry and disappeared. He later denied that he took any of the jury. No charge was ever brought. They divorced in 1972. Turner always said that her goal was to have one husband and seven children. And instead, she had seven husbands and one child. One of Lana Turner's last movies is Witch's Brew in 1980 with Terry Garr. From 1982 until 1983, she will appear on TV's Falcon Crest. Now here she is on the set with Jane Wyland. In 1992, she will be diagnosed with throat cancer. After treatment, she will announce in 1993 that she was cancer free. In July of 94, the cancer will return. Now on the 29th of June, 1995, Lana Turner dies of throat cancer at her condominium in Center City, Los Angeles. She'll be cremated. Back in 1950, on May the 24th, her hand and footprints were placed in cement in front of Grumman's Chinese Theater. Her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is located at 6241 Hollywood Boulevard. Lana Turner, not the sweater girl, but the actress, was 74 years old.